after wearing the hat, Professor Flint and Mary Anning for an extended period of time, do you ever struggle to switch back to your normal selves? As Michael and Gemma. Okay, so there have been times when <laughs> I've been Professor Flint for several days in a row at somewhere like the South Australian Museum and I'm doing shows and then between the shows I'm roving around. So I am for four or five or six hours in a row, you're basically doing a five hour show because you're in character for that whole period yeah. of time. And yes, I have been known to go into a pub <laughs> afterwards and say, hello, I'll have a scooter of beer, thanks. <laughs> um, I've been known to be reading things afterwards to, to relax and I'm reading with a Scottish accent. <laughs> so what so does... Yes. <laughs> yeah, so, so yes. I mean, what does help is that when you, when you flint up, um, you know, you've got the hat, the glasses on the nose, the, the, t -shirt, the, the, the lab coat... And Flint is often, he has a particular walk, and I often talk about this, he has a walk that I don't have. And so, and he has a, I don't think manic is quite, or maybe it is, he has a manic way of thinking and responding and reacting because he's constantly in awe of the gloriousness of natural history and the world around us. That, that so, so when I turn back into Michael, I tend to quite often be like, uh, <laughs> and, and veg a bit. Um, but yeah, I, I have been known to, to read in a Scottish accent <laughs> inside my... Like, this is not reading out loud, like reading a book. And I'm reading it. My inner voice is Scottish. But yeah, going to pub and so ordering. So random. <laughs> God. No, I, I can't say I've ever had the same problem. Do you reckon it's, the, do you reckon it's the training? I... Possibly. Maybe, maybe not. Or just the personality type that I just... I'm just mental. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I like the way the way that I always my first approach when getting into character. For some characters, it doesn't work, and I need to think of a new way in. But generally speaking, and what I do for Mary is like I I use a lot of um, imagery, and I kind of visualize a new surrounding, and that's my like quick way into a character. So when I um, when I get a new character, I will create like a picture in my head of just like it's a trigger picture it's kind of the best description that I have of it um yeah and so like for Mary it's like my trigger picture is like it was the first beach that we went to with all the cliffs um and it's like I can picture like everything kind of goes into like a sepia tone in this trigger picture because that's how I relate to the olden, olden days, days. <laughs> Um, kind of a sepia tone, you know, and I'm in my dress and I like, I can feel it all on me, like how it sits. Um, and I just kind of take a second to be like, this is where I am. You know, I've traveled back in time in my head and I'm ready to go. And then the second that it's called cut or I walk off stage or whatever I'm doing, I'm instantly able to just let go of that and be like, yep, I'm off. Yeah. I'm good. I mean, part of that is interesting too, because, because for me, with, when, when I flint up, it's always the hat that goes on at yeah. the end. It's like, right, I'm him now. And I've had people talking to Flint, all other characters, like I've been Father Christmas and they're wanting to talk to Michael. It's like, Michael's gone. Yeah, it's like, once like, once you've hit that point, it's like, <laughs> no, like I need to do, I'm ready now. I need to go and you can deal with yeah. Michael or Gemma later. Or like, I'll, I'll pass on a message to Michael if you like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, Scaffy glasses. Um... Yeah, I don't know. So I've never had... Pro it's always... <laughs> um, some of the behind-the-scenes videos are quite funny because you'll see me, like, running and jumping and be like, woo, Mary, and then Michael will be like, okay, great, and instantly I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. Like, it's... I don't know. I, like, I, there's something so funny about watching someone, like, click out of character. It's yeah, because you sometimes you suddenly just stop to get... It's just, like, mid-jump. You're just like, oh... <laughs> Next question. Next question. Okay. Little top one. Yeah. Maybe. Ooh. If not Mary, then who would be your next choice? As a as a character to play or a historical Irish. character? Well, maybe like, maybe you first because because you're doing the whole musical theatre thing at Griffith. So is is there a role 
for you that you would want to play? Oh, I don't know. Um, like that, I guess that comes to mind that that because like I'm also trying to relate it to like like if I wasn't doing this project with you, what would be the next project that I would do within this heaps good realm? Like, because I could just list off a list of dream roles to play <laughs> in random musicals, but um, that's oh, not yeah, particularly okay, cool. relevant. Yeah, yeah, so whether it's... <laughs> okay, so if, if so if the question to the both of us, if, if we weren't working on this Mary thing, yeah. what would we be working on? Well, wow. I've got some ideas, but first, <laughs> over to you. I don't know. Because I, I, I'm not a historian or a scientist, so I don't, like, I don't know a lot about, because you know, what's so good about what you do is it's all based in fact. You know, we don't just write random characters. I mean, we do sometimes. <laughs> but they're, even them, are based in fact. But even then, so there's, 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 uh, you like to find the truth. Yeah, especially always. where there's truth that you can challenge and interrogate yeah. and flip the points of view. Yeah. So, I mean, we've done Pirates. We've done Mary. What's See, another niche I reckon, well, I, I mean, as, as you were talking, I was thinking, uh, the big book of Pirates... Yeah, actually, that's for me, fair. That's fair. Is, is something that... And, and I'm talking to some folk at the moment about doing an updated version of it. Um, so I did an album a couple of years ago with associated with that called The Big Songbook of Pirates, but not all the songs from The Big Book of Pirates version one and two are on it. And it's only my voice on the album, so one thought would be to, to do a fully consolidated version of the two shows together um, and to, to do the album that goes with that. The format that it's done in, whether it's done as a musical or a ballet or a cartoon or... Look, if you've got a huge sum of money and you want to create something <laughs> Disney-esque and lovely, this is the show. And what I liked about that show, you know, the same as this one, you know, it... it it was about uh, empowering women, and I think it's really important that middle-aged white men do what they can to be allies and are not threatened by. Yeah, you know. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, I think, yeah, I think that. Yeah. I think, I think if it's a thing that we're both working on. Absolutely. Um, absolutely, that. Yeah, no, that show has like a ridiculous amount of potential because it really, like, it really is. It's. Um, like all the kids that came to that show just adored it because it was like you had this woman like that was like I'm gonna be a pirate and it was so empowering for all the little girls that were like I'm not gonna like this instantly they were engaged and then you had all the reality of being a pirate like all of the, it's, like, it's like, not great <laughs> it's, it's not great like a lot of the, like a lot of the songs except when Buddy the Dragon comes in were based in fact. They were all about real things that pirates or people on long voyages and shit. You're saying Buddy the Dragon's not real. Oh. Although there is that song, You Can't Be Real. Yeah. But is that? Turns out he is. Turns out he is. But it's, you know, all, like it's all, it's all based in fact. So it was, you had the education, you had female empowerment, you had hilarious jokes about. That was my role. Vomiting. I was the idiot in the show. Um, Who knew? Like, yeah, it, it ticked so many boxes. Yeah, and, and the other thing with that too is that, so the so we did one episode in the Maritime Museum in the January. Yeah. Second part two was in July. And that was very much a show where your voice was in my head. <laughs> he worked with me once and he was stuck. He was <laughs> stuck with that she won't, voice. She won't go away. It's just like, I turn, I laugh. <laughs> I walk out the front door and she's like there in the TARDIS. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, no, it's, it's, uh. it, it's real. It's, um, <laughs> but, but it was that thing of, of like the opening song for Big Book of Pirates, which is a, a, a big argument between the two characters, was very much written knowing our voices oh, absolutely um and so that's why i think if you listen to it live you go that suits those voices because because it was written for it and that's where the dra the, the the ballad the buddy the dragon ballad yeah uh, came from because again that was like oh i hear your voice yes yeah. 
and the Lightfoot. Buddy the Dragon ballad was kind of the basis of my dog Trey. Like it kind of became, similar style. Kind yeah, of. I was like, you saw how that worked, and you were like, how can I use the information that I got from that song to then create this new ballad for Mary? Yeah, because this is a kind of song that suits yeah Jim and Dandy's voice. 